Hey, everybody. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. Hey, come on, somebody. We are here. <laughs> We're so pumped that you found us. You know, we pray all the time and we say, God, would you please just send people yeah. to our show and to our podcast from around the world who just would um, be blessed by the content. Absolutely. You know, guys, we've been married for 24 years and our goal of this podcast is mm -hmm. just to share with you um, the things that we've done well, mm -hmm. but more importantly, the things that we don't do well. And the hope is that you'll grow closer to God and closer to the people that God's brought in your life. And if this content is valuable to you, please let us know, you know, that encourages us It inspires us to keep on going. You know, the best way that you could reach out to us and let us know that this content is blessing you is by leaving a review. You know, we read those reviews, but more importantly, other people read those reviews. You can actually use the review page as a testimony page where you can just say, this is what God has done. This is what God is saying. This is oh, what God is that doing. That blesses us so much, yeah, though. It, I love that. Yeah, I love it. And so you got something else you want to say? <laughs> you <laughs> no. just love it. Right. And so, you know, please do that. Um, of course, you can like, share, comment, subscribe. We drop new content every Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern. And so welcome, everybody. We got a great show for everybody on today. Today's episode is specifically going to be for the ladies. Mm. All right. And the title it's of today is night. going to be The Proverbs 31 Woman. Yes. Okay. And um, I don't want the guys to tune out. Mm -hmm. because I do believe we're going to share some principles that is, it doesn't matter what your gender is. I believe yeah. there's principles from God's word that transcends gender and mm -hmm. we can pull out the principles. But if you are a man and you're listening to this, it's because there is a woman in your life that you love. Come on. Wife, mother, aunt, daughter, that you can grab principles to share with them or even share yes. this episode with them. And I think it'll be a, a crazy blessing. I personally love to hear um, messages and just things talking about a man in general mm -hmm. because I have a son and I have a husband and I have a brother and I have a lot of men that are important in my life. And when I can understand what a man goes through in their life and their point of view and their perspective, it just blesses me. And I feel like I'm able to be a blessing and, con and to communicate better mm -hmm. So this that. is for everyone. I never thought about that. I think that's really important. I w when you said that, I had this thought, man, maybe it's almost more important for men to listen to sermons about women than even mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. You know how we go to women's conferences? We should have a women's conference for men, mm. <laughs> meaning so that men could get to know what, what, what drives a woman or what a woman needs. Yeah. And maybe women should go to men's conference to learn more about men because it almost feels like it's this, well, I need this. and You don't understand my needs, but how much have we done to really learn each other? To understand needs? each other. Yeah. So with that being said, this podcast is for everybody today, <laughs> praise God. But we're going to actually come right out of the Bible and then we're going to kind of break this down okay. because there is this woman also known as the virtuous woman. The virtuous woman. Um, some people would say the virtuous wife, but I would just say, you know, it goes for all women in mm -hmm. general. This is what you can aspire to be mm -hmm. found in Proverbs chapter 31. And we're actually going to read this out of the Bible. Now, if you've, you're not a Bible person, you've never read the Bible before. I'm telling you, if you're a woman, you want to look at the Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10 woman. And um, this is what it says. Um, listen to this, guys. It says, who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, um, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not of evil all the days of her life. Mm. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She brings her food from afar. She also arises while it's yet night and provides food for her household and a portion of her, for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it, from her prophets, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and, strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hand to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hand to the needy. She's not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. 
strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Mm. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. And so our goal of the podcast today is to raise up more Proverbs 31 woman. I'm glad that I'm speaking right now to a Proverbs 31 woman because that's what you are. But what sticks out to you from Proverbs 31, Mm -hmm. chapter 10 through 30, I believe? What sticks Um, out? I mean, there's so many things that stick out. But in general, the Proverbs 31 woman is a woman to me who is just handling her business. Mm -hmm. She is actually not a, like, this woman doesn't have a name. She wasn't actually a real person like her name is Susan or Sarah she was just uh, a woman a description of a woman so uh, a mother was sharing with her son this is the kind of woman you want to marry okay stop right there Mm -hmm. so you said a woman was sharing with her son Uh uh-huh so this is the writer's Sharing with her son? Yeah. The uh-huh. the writer is uh-huh. a king. Okay. And he is writing down what his mother told him about the oh. woman that he should marry. Okay. And so it's not this kind of, because some people, mm-hmm. now I was never this woman, but some people, some women, especially mm-hmm. today, read this Proverbs 31 scripture Mm -hmm. and they feel so condemned. They feel like, oh my gosh, I'm never, I can't live up to this. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to be able to be a mom and a wife and a businesswoman and do all of these things that she does. And they feel so condemned. Uh Um, But really this is talking about a woman who's simply handling her business. Mm -hmm. She does whatever she needs to do. Mm -hmm. So if you are a single woman, Mm -hmm. you are handling your business. If you're a a, a single mom, you're handling your business. Mm -hmm. You are, uh, as a wife, as a businesswoman, Mm -hmm. you're just taking care of and doing whatever you need to do. Yeah. Um, What what sticks out to you? I mean, because there's so much. I mean, there's 10 verses of just, Mm -hmm. no, 20 verses. I don't know how many verses we just read. There's a whole lot of verses of revelation in here. Uh Uh-huh. And um, but what is your favorite stuff? Um, My favorite thing is basically, okay. so when I first got saved and, you know, I didn't have a lot of examples of uh, a virtuous woman, Mm -hmm. of a woman of God, of a holy woman. Like, what does that mean? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. And a lot of my perception was like, you know, I would go to church and I would hear the preacher preach and, you know, all of this stuff. And I would be like, okay. Not like consciously think it, but feel like but that's good for you mm-hmm. um, because you're holy and you have on your robe and you know what I mean? Like, but, but for me, have on a robe for real? well, this is when I was first um, going okay. to church. Okay. This is way back um, Yeah. Day. This is when I was <laughs> searching for God. And I was like, who in the world had a yeah, robe Yeah. We went, when I was woman. in college, you remember uh-huh. the church we went to I in college, they would wear a robe. The yeah. pastor would wear a robe yeah. and God bless them. I mean, there's nothing wrong yeah, with the robe. bring robes back. Go ahead. Doc. There's nothing wrong with the robe. I know people still wear robes. But I'm just saying my perspective was... But you're holy. Okay. You don't know me. You mm-hmm. don't know where I come from. You don't know what I've done. Mm-hmm. And because of that, it kind of like separated me mm-hmm. from the scripture. Okay. And so when I, um, we joined, we got married and we got married right after, kind of a little bit after I got saved. Mm-hmm. And that began my journey with the Lord. Mm-hmm. So we got married while we were in college. We graduated college. And then we moved to Washington, D.C., where we found a church. And when we were in this church, the pastor's wife, who was also a pastor, she would talk about the Proverbs 31 women. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember going every Saturday, like every first Saturday of the month, we would go to a women's meeting and we would talk about the Proverbs 31 woman. And so the way that she opened it up to me, to my my fresh ears and described it to me, it was never with condemnation. It was never something that I had to live up to, but it was always with something that was like refreshing and a privilege, like, oh, wow, I can I can be holy um, 
and live a holy life because God made me holy, not because of what I've done or anything like that, but this is just who I am. And so anyway, I think it was presented to me in, in a kind of that kind of way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I read the Proverbs 31 woman, I feel inspired. Mm-hmm. I feel encouraged. I okay. feel like it's something to aspire to be. Okay. Um, I don't know. Also with the 31, the the Proverbs 31 woman, I see like I'm 47 years old right now. And I see a woman of like all ages in there. I see like when I was younger, you know, maybe first got married. I see um, when I first, um, you know, had babies and I was a young mother. I see that woman in there. I also see the older woman in there, the woman who has already gone through menopause because toward the end of the the, um, passage, it says like this woman, you know, she will be praised like her husband is known at the gates and um, she deserves the you know to be rewarded for the fruit of her hands and it's just like her children rise up and call her blessed it's like this is a woman on the other side of life Mm -hmm. and um, I just think it's something that's beautiful Mm -hmm. and peaceable Mm -hmm. and inspiring why would anybody feel like this is um, condemning though I don't know if I get that. Like, Um, I've never thought that when I read Proverbs 31. I don't know. I'm the kind of person that I feel like we all need a model. mm -hmm, Me too. We all need a bar Mm that's set somewhere. And just because there is something that might be beyond where I currently am, I'm not not downtrodden, but I'm not, like, depressed or I'm not like, oh, that's not me. I could never measure up to this. Um, Is that a popular mindset? Um, I think that that it has grown to be more popular. Uh um, And... I only I know it because I have a, like I said I've always felt so great about the Proverbs 31 woman uh-huh. but I've talked to a few I talked to a lot of women right. and not everyone feels like that uh-huh. people feel like oh my gosh you mean you know when it says that she wakes up before the sun yeah. and makes food for her house well I don't like to cook uh-huh. you know <laughs> well you know um but but I look at it more like I look at it more like but I, I feel like what's in God's word um what is the principles that mm-hmm. you can take from exactly. it? Exactly. And if you can take steps towards that, you don't have to be perfect, but your life is going to be better. Exactly. So let's say that I was that woman mm-hmm. and I read that and I don't cook. Mm-hmm. What if I decided, you know what? I'm going to take cooking classes. I'm not, I'm, I might not be Martha Stewart, but I'm going to be better than what I currently mm-hmm. am. Right now I've been giving my family microwave dinners and we've been eating Chick-fil-A Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But now I'm going to try to step towards something. So to me, when I read the Bible, I don't know. I'm just concerned with people that are challenged when they're challenged with something where they could be better they actually dump on themselves and feel worse and they back out instead of move towards Mm -hmm. so when i read something and i know that i'm not there especially in the bible i'm saying oh that's what i could be Mm -hmm. so if god ever um, shows me where somebody else is um it's he's no respecter of person he's given me a limit to where i could get to so i'm not I'm not discouraged. I'm actually encouraged to say, man, I could be a Proverbs 31 woman. So to me, I feel like it doesn't matter how old you are. It don't matter what you believe, how much sin you've committed. I think there are some things from the Proverbs 31 woman that you're like, ooh, that's my goal. That's where I can get to. And the fact that it's in the Bible, there's going to be a supernatural grace on me to help me get there. Mm -hmm. But is that that true? I mean, it's true. What Uh you said is true, but every... You know, different people have different perspectives, different backgrounds Uh and different ways that they view things. And um, I kind of agree with you. I Uh kind of like, look, I need to cook and take care of this family. You know Uh what I mean? Like somebody's got to do it. He's Uh not doing it. You know, I'm going to take care of it. I like being the virtuous woman. And that's not to say that a man can't cook and do those things. I believe that there can be uh, every family needs their own communication of the division of labor. Mm -hmm. I don't cook in this family. It doesn't mean that a man can't do all of the cooking or they can't be 50 50. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to. I think every. Um, couple and married person has to find their um, their quotient, so to say. Absolutely, like what they equal together, the culture of their family, what they want it to be. Mm-hmm. And, and that's and so uh-huh. the principle from this is that the Proverbs 31 woman, she is handling her business. She is tending to the cares right. of her household. I can see that. So if I'm a Proverbs 31 woman, you know, and I'm going to take care of my household, say I don't like to cook and I just mess up everything. I put, that is not how God blessed me and, and, and graced me. Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to figure it out. Right. I'm either going to get somebody to come and cook for me. Uh-huh. That's still being a Proverbs 31. That's still me tending to the cares of my household. 
household right. and taking care of my family. Or I'm going to learn how to make a sandwich. Mm -hmm. I'm going to learn how to boil some eggs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have some cereal for breakfast. Mm -hmm. I am going to make sure that my family is provided for. I don't like to go to the grocery store. Right. You know, I don't like to. I make sure that I get on my grocery app and they deliver my groceries to the door. Mm -hmm. That is nothing, you know, less of me. Well, that's a Proverbs 31 move. Yeah, you're a, a going to Proverbs handle your move. business, okay? <laughs> you don't have to cook it. Just make sure that it's supplied. You know, we live in a day and time where people almost get upset at, like, traditional gender roles. Mm -hmm. And whatever with all that. Mm -hmm. Like, there are certain principles that, like, for real, every family has to figure out, I got to figure out what my strengths and weaknesses exactly. are, and we got to figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are, mm -hmm. and we got to kind of curtail our family based upon your strengths and my strengths. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, is that there are some things that I'm weak and you're weak in, too, yep. as well. That's when we got to grow the doggone up, and we got to learn to do stuff that maybe we didn't have the skill to do before, we didn't have the patience to do before, and so when I see somebody that's ahead of me, or something in scripture that says, oh my God, I don't do that, I'm actually encouraged to know, like, okay, if one of us have to do this for our family mm -hmm. to accomplish the vision and the goal that he set in our heart, well, then someone has to step up. Is it going to be you in this case or is it going to be me? Yeah. You know, and that's not about traditional gender roles. That's about us figuring out how to get the Claters or the Johnsons or the Smiths or whoever's listening to this mm -hmm. into the place of destiny. Mm -hmm. And so I love the Proverbs 31 woman. I think it's super encouraging. And I would encourage my daughters. I would encourage any woman that I love to study Proverbs chapter 31 and pull out the principles yes. that she can rightly apply in this season as a goal. You know, a lot of people, we need role models. I'm big on mentorship. I think I, I, I've always thought about writing a book, Mentorship, Your sh Shortcut to Success, mm -hmm. because I believe that people are looking for shortcuts to success. It's like, should I try this this, this, this scheme or this, this company or this idea, or if I do these 10 things, will there be a short? And what I've learned is that there's really no shortcuts to success. You're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to believe God. There's no shortcuts to success. Mm -hmm. But if I had to give you one, that is a it would be mentorship. Yeah. Meaning that you can learn from somebody else's successes and you can learn from somebody else's failures so that what took them 10 years might take you five. Exactly. It's not a shortcut, but it's called doing it not the hard way, but the easy way. Doing it the smart way. Yeah, the smart way. And so I guess at the end of the day, it is a shortcut. You know, and it's called mentorship. So, you know, w people have all kinds of different role models. You know, somebody said, well, this this artist, this singer is my role model. And I look up to this person and that's cool and everything, because I believe like even from people who um, are good at writing songs or producing movies or running businesses, there are principles that we can learn from them. But if I'm going to model my life after anybody, it's going to be a man or woman of God. Mm -hmm. No question about it, that I've had men and women of God that I have gleaned from, that I have learned from, that have helped develop the God or the Christ on the inside of me. And I feel like, we, and that's why we have this podcast. This is kind of like a mentorship tool for people where you can tune in and maybe you don't know us personally, but you still know us because we're sitting down with you every single week sharing the good, yeah. bad, and the ugly, like books or mentorship tools. Like a person takes 30 years of their experiences and they put it in 250 pages, but people don't understand. Like, you know, there's certain things like some people would pay $5,000 to go to some motivational speaker thing. And then we have a conference that's $150 and they're not sure if they want to come. It's because they don't understand the investment that's needed for mentorship. There's just something about being in the right room at the right time with the right people. But anyway, back to Proverbs 31. So this is God's example of mentorship to us for mm. women. Like this woman that does not have a name but shares with us principles is a biblical mentor to women of our day. And I just think it's powerful. So we've been married for 24 years, and um, I think that you exemplify this very well. Yeah. I believe that you, um, you are without question a Proverbs 31 woman, a virtuous woman. Um, I believe you take care of your family well. Mm -hmm. You take care of your children very well. Um, I believe that you take care of your husband very well. Um, the part I'm working with you big on right now is taking care of yourself very well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another podcast for another day. Yeah. If y'all want that, let us know. Because I think there's a GTS that's really needed, which mm -hmm. is grace to self. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women don't understand self-care because they're so busy taking care of the kids and everybody Absolutely. else's needs. And that's the biggest area that I think that you could grow in. 
And but, I think, you know, that's one of the things that blesses me the most about the Proverbs 31 woman is that she is doing all of those things. And so I equivalent, like if I look at someone's Instagram or social media, you see all of the highlights. Mm -hmm. This passage is the highlights of the Proverbs 31 woman's life, mm -hmm. because if she is married, mm -hmm. She, she, she's had some arguments. She's had some things going on. Uh -huh. If she's a mom, those kids have gotten on her last nerve. Mm -hmm. She has yelled at the kids. They've been fighting. They've been tearing up stuff and breaking stuff. Mm -hmm. She's going through life. If she is a businesswoman, mm -hmm. she has had some things, you know, that she's got some clients that are just, you know, crazy. Mm -hmm. um, she's got deadlines. There's so many things that are going on in her life. However, she still chooses mm -hmm. to live her life in wisdom. Mm -hmm. to let kindness be the law of her tongue, mm -hmm. that her husband, you know, is praised in the gates, her, st her children still rise up and call her blessed. Okay. And so I think that, you know, when I'm looking at this, sometimes you have to read what's not said. Uh -huh. You have to read in between the lines because a woman has, you know, women's issues. Right. Every 30 days she had a cycle. Mm -hmm. You know, when she wasn't on cycle, she had babies. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was something else right there, being hormonal and giving birth to babies and you're nursing babies and you got other ones running around. Mm -hmm. That's enough to like make you crazy. But she somehow manages to bring it back to God, bring it back to peace and be a virtuous woman. And toward the end of her life or, you know, mm -hmm. she, she's praised. Mm -hmm. And I think that really inspires me. Like you said, grace to self and, and helping myself. One thing about the Proverbs 31 woman is that she took a Sabbath mm -hmm. because in her time, the Sabbath would have been a law. It wasn't, you know, a choice. So we know that every seven days she was taking a rest. She was enjoying her children and enjoying her husband and enjoying herself. And so I just kind of, that's a new thing for me to apply to my life. Like, you know what? I'm going to, you know, really take time to Sabbath, really take time to rest because I want to be like the virtuous woman. Okay. So here's a few points that sticks out to me. I'd love to hear your heart on what you, what you get out of it. It says that her heart, the heart of her husband safely trust in her. Um, the heart of her husband safely trust in her. What's your perspective on that? Um, I think that to me, it tells me that she has a relationship with her husband. Mm -hmm. It's not just high and by. It's not just like, oh, I, you know, I do this for you or you do this for me. We're not just roommates. But she, if his heart mm -hmm. safely trusts in her, mm -hmm. they have daily communion. They have a relationship to where I can bring anything to you wife. And, um, I trust that you're going to keep my secrets. I trust that you're going to have my back. I trust that you're not going to bring me to shame. Yeah. I definitely trust you. Mm -hmm. Um, it also says that she seeks wool and flax and willing, willingly works with her hands. Mm -hmm. Um, what jumps out to you about that statement? I mean, I just see like she seeks, you know, she goes to Target, Walmart, <laughs> she gets on Amazon, she does what she has to Walmart. do, and she's willingly works with her hands. I mean, she might not prefer to go out and pull the weeds, but if she's got to do it, she's going to go and do it. Well, yeah, I mean, you do a lot of stuff around the house. You know, once again, not typical gender roles. But, I mean, if something breaks in the house, you'll probably fix, fix it, it before me. Now, I will be the person that will call the people to yes. fix it. Like right now, I'm working on the grass. God help us. <laughs> and the grass, I ordered sod, and then it all died, and this is just a whole other thing. Uh, now the air condition has went down, and I tried to get the air condition guy to come out and fix it, but he said it can't be fixed. it got to be replaced. And so uh, that's a work in progress for me. But I see you out in the garden, mm -hmm. and we don't really have a big yard, but you're out there laying bricks, coming mm -hmm. in with dirt all up in between. When you're I paved nails. myself a little patio. She put a patio wonderful. out there and kind of does well, all just of a little that. garden. Uh, it also says that she is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. Mm -hmm. Anything on that one stick out to you? Uh, you know, again, she can go out to the specialty grocery stores. Uh -huh. And, you know, I go to Trader Joe's and get my, you know, peaches from, you know, Guatemala. And I, I, I just... That's what I'm going to do. You know, uh -huh. I don't have to be all exotic and stuff like that, but I'm just going to make sure that my household has what it needs. I uh -huh. like to go to the grocery store. Uh -huh. Last time I went to the grocery store, um, I bought home some star, star fruit and, um, it's just great. I haven't had it for the kids for a long time, but I take it home and slice it up because I want to mm -hmm. bring home just specialty things for the family. Let us try something new. Here you go, kids. Have some star fruit. Right. You know, I just, I got to say this. In a world where 
like um, traditional gender roles are being questioned. Mm -hmm. I think it's also good at the same time to not throw the baby out with the bathwater and to know that there are some traditional things that are there and actually healthy. Mm -hmm. For example, a woman who's like, well, I don't do anything with cooking, anything with food, Mm -hmm. I would really ask you maybe just to reconsider that position. Yeah. I mean, I know that he can do it, but let me just say from a man's perspective, I'm a very simple creature. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say that I just need sex and a sandwich. You know, (laughs) if, if I have sex and I have a sandwich, my life is pretty going to be pretty good. Yeah. I'm not saying without God, but what I'm saying is that I've made it just that simple. If I can have a plate of food after a long day, it doesn't have to be a gourmet meal, but I just know that I'm going to get fed and I can know that I have um, uh, consistent sex with my wife mm-hmm. and that's a whole nother topic that mm-hmm. we get into because sex is not something that should just be enjoyable to me it should be enjoyable to you as well I should want it just like you should want it I don't mm-hmm. need you just to meet my needs I'm going into sex to meet your needs and hopefully you're coming in to meet my needs and through the physical form of sex of course intimacy is the most important thing that's another um, podcast for another day but I just think there's something about a woman who might be listening who has done nothing. You know, the kids might get up hungry and it's like, hungry, you go fix yourself some food. The dude come home and there's just nothing. The refrigerator's mm-hmm. bare. And I understand if you're in a season where money is short, but I'm not talking about that. I'm mm-hmm. talking about where she mu- she doesn't have a care for mm-hmm. the food. And I just think that's important that that Proverbs woman, she at least cared about her family being fed. Yeah. And I think there's more. It's just like you're tending to the cares of your household. Right. So as a, as a woman, mm-hmm. as a woman of God, as that Proverbs woman, I am looking over. I feel like I am assigned by God to care for my house. Come on. You know, and so whether it's you take out the trash, you mm-hmm. know, well, I'm going to ins- I'm going to oversee and make sure all of this is taken care of. Mm-hmm. And so I, I start off even in the environment of my home. I you like do. music playing in my you home. Do. I have certain laws in our house that you know it at a certain time we turn off the lights right. we're not going to have the music blasted and the tv blasted mm-hmm. but we are preparing for the next day mm-hmm. i like there to be peace in my home i want my children to always know that you know certain things are going to be a certain way mm-hmm. i it, want my children to grow up and have been and have lived by a certain standard of life Mm -hmm. so that when they go and have their own families, they can uphold that standard. They don't come down to anything less because they've been brought up to a standard. Yeah, It's almost like you you as a woman has the authority to create a certain atmosphere. Absolutely. I think you do a great job at that. And I think it's something worth sharing. So, Uh, uh, you know, but what, but what you said mm -hmm. about, you know, not like a woman being, you know, in charge of her household, I guess those are my words, but yeah, I think that is very important. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, if the kids are waking up and the kids are hungry and he's hungry and he don't know how to cook and he's not doing anything, I'm like, Hey, that's, that's on me. I'm going, I personally, I want to make sure that my man is taken care of. I want to, make sure that my kids are taken care of. Right. Now I'm going, like I said, I, I personally, I like to cook and I like to do all of mm-hmm. those things, but mm-hmm. we're in a season right now. Like I, I need to get to work and I need to get the kids in, you know, in school. So either I, like I've taught my kids, mm-hmm. you know how to make toast and bacon and, and like, I taught them how to do it at this point. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've also done things like, okay, I'll at least boil eggs and I leave them there on the counter or I'll scrambled eggs and, and, you know, I leave it I all there. Problem. There hasn't been milk though for like the you, last you told me that I yesterday you, that. you know it didn't get it wasn't done. just yesterday it was the day before that oh really that. yeah but you very, just told me patient. yesterday i've been very patient well before it wasn't cereal now it's no milk so see i haven't had it's been going on for about a week now but <laughs> <laughs> Look, I really didn't know that. Uh-huh. I really didn't know because <laughs> I've know. ordered other groceries and I have everything. You, have. you got bread, there, you milk. got lunch meat, you got eggs, but you got you everything. You can't do anything with cereal with no milk, though. <laughs> <laughs> I've poured a bowl and the blueberries are still sitting in the bowl and they're sitting in the refrigerator for the last few days. You see, no and so now I am at the point where my husband is spoiled, my children are spoiled, <laughs> rotten. It? Okay, they just expect they think the stuff because for for so long th- stuff is just there, the milk is just there, and then when it's not there, and for a few days on top of that, they're just like, "What is going no, on?" No, I don't think that's being. What spoiled. happened to the milk? I, I don't in my think life. that's being spoiled. I think that that's just um, management. And Absolutely. you have a part to play and I have a part to play and we expect you to do your part and I'm going to do my part. Now, the kids, you can't depend on them for anything. Well, what I was <laughs> going to say is I'm not going to get upset with you mm-hmm. or irritated by you talking about this milk yeah. because I feel good. That just shows me that I've been doing my job. Come on. OK, you what know, I, I'll get you have. some milk. Get me I'm some sorry. Milk, girl. <laughs>
<laughs> and at the same time, I don't make too big of a deal of it. So yeah. I just made eggs yeah. every day. And so we just keep it rolling. But I thought you should, since you're bringing up food. So anyway, what about this one? It says strength and honor are her clothing. Mm, um, I love that. What does that mean to you? Uh, I think that she sees beyond the superficial. Mm. I think that, you know, this woman, she's having babies and she's, you know, she has PMS and, and menopause and she's going through life and she's gaining a little bit of weight here and losing a little ba- bit of weight there. Mm. It also says that, that she strengthens personal. her arms mm-hmm. and stuff. And so she's exercising. She's making sure she's taking care of her body. But strength and honor are her clothing. That means that she cares more about what's on the inside yeah, what than what she looks like on the outside, yeah. even though she knows know she looks good Uh because she's taking care of herself and handling her business. She knows that she's beautiful, Uh but she knows that that's not where her true value is. Her value, it lies within. What about this one? She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. Mm, I like that. This scripture tells me that this woman, she, 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 she's not so young. Uh I think that, you know, you can be young and wise and Uh stuff, but Uh when I think about someone who opens their mouth with wisdom and and kindness is the law of their tongue, Mm -hmm. I think about your more mature woman. I think I got there when I was maybe in my 30s. I started to get there, Mm -hmm. and I'm better now that I'm in my 40s, and I want to get better and better and better. I mean, kindness sticks out to me on this one. Mm -hmm. Um, Kindness is the law of her tongue. I think there's a lot of women who don't understand the power Mm -hmm. that they have in their mouth to Mm -hmm. tear down their husband or their family or to build them up. Come on. And um, there's something about kindness, the atmosphere of kindness, man. Yeah. My God, there's no atmosphere like that in a home. It's one of our core values, mm-hmm. actually, that we teach our kids. Kindness, yeah. And I think kindness is one of those things that, here's how I deal with kindness, and I've been getting better at it mm-hmm. uh, recently, I think, because I had to check myself. Check yourself. It is you when, yourself. like, you treat your family, uh-huh. your kids, and your spouse the same way you would treat somebody who just came to your front door. So like when I come to church or work or whatever, or the grocery store and somebody's like, hi, I'm like, hi, how are you? And I'm patient with them. I'm kind with them. I talk to them. I smile and I, you know, put forth my best effort. Um, I think when it comes to kindness inside of our home, we do the same thing with our kids. <laughs> like, hey, babe, yeah, how, good morning. How are you? Podcast for another day. It's almost like don't treat your, you're an adult, but you act like a 13-year-old. Yeah. That's what 13-year-olds do. Yeah. Like you pick them up from school, they get in the car. How are you? Good. And then for 30 minutes, a whole ride home, say absolutely nothing. Don't care about your life. I ain't asking right. about your day. Don't, you know, but if they saw their friends, oh, hey, how you doing? Come on, let's take a picture together. You know what I'm saying? So don't act like a 13-year-old. Exactly. Um, I'll give you one more. It says that um, charm is deceitful and beauty is passing but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. What Anything stick out to you on that one? Um, no, I, I th- well, yes. I think more of what I was just talking about is mm-hmm. just that um, the true beauty lies within. Mm-hmm. And who you are isn't you know necessarily what you look like, um, but really who God's called you to be, you know, mm-hmm. like you're a child of God, you're a daughter of God. Mm-hmm. Um, the principles and the, the law of God that you follow, I think that is mm-hmm. um, what I aspire to be at least. Yeah. So what I hear today is number one, virtuous women need other virtuous women. Mm-hmm. And I think that's an important principle for women who are listening. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that the reason that that was birthed in you 20 years ago is because you was around another Proverbs 31 virtuous Mm -hmm. woman. And then virtuous women were getting together and virtuous women give birth to other virtuous women. Amen. And so, you know, uh, don't do life alone. I think as a woman, it's easy because of your responsibilities to kind of put your head down. But you need other women who you can aspire to become like and learn from in your life. Absolutely. Um, I also hear today that this is not a checklist of things to do, but principles to live by. And so when you read Proverbs 31, don't look like, like, oh, my God, am I done this? Am I done this? Like, oh, this is just more things for me to do. Mm-hmm. No, these are principles that you get to live by. This is not what you have to do, but what you get to mm. live by if you so choose. And it's actually to bring value to you and to those that you love in your life. And I also hear today that it doesn't matter where you are or who you are. You can actually take steps towards being a Proverbs 31 woman. And my hope 
is that when people hear you and they hear your story and they see where you come from, and for those who are newer to our show, they don't might not understand that you came from poverty and you've experienced racism and sexual abuse and verbal abuse and all these different things, but we see the beautiful woman that you are today, which is really the handiwork of God. People say, how do you know God's real? I would say, have you seen my wife? You know, And so mm. that's your, the evidence. And I think that there's a lot of women who are listening to this that your life is not perfect, but you are actually the evidence that God is real, how Amen. he's changed your life. And so um, anyone who's listening to this, you can take a step towards this. It's not a checklist. It's principles that you get to live by. But it starts with you in your heart saying, I want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. I want to be that virtuous woman. Okay, here's the principles that she lived by. What's the first three that I can perfect? Uh, maybe I should ask my husband and other those who, who are around me, what are the things that you see in me that I could take from this to apply to my life to make mm. me take a step towards that? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's kindness. Maybe it's management. Maybe it's delegation. Maybe it's how you treat your husband. The script, uh, it talked about how everybody knew him in the city gates because of his wife. I'm talking about this woman had the, she, she had that thing. Man, and I think that women have that, they have that umph, they have that thing if they really use it for the good and not for the bad. And so you have a ministry called Pio Woman, mm -hmm. and it's actually an, another way to say a Proverbs 31 woman, in my opinion. Yeah, it's definitely. another expression of the virtuous woman of God. Um, or, or is, can you just tell me a little bit about Pio and what's your heart behind it and what your vision is for women? Yeah, absolutely. So Pio is short for pioneer. Uh -huh. And um, I a long time ago, um, I, when I was looking for a, a, a name for the women's ministry that I was to lead, um, I was having a talk with another woman mm -hmm. who is a mentor. I love her so much. And um, I was just sharing with her what was going on in my life, where I was, and getting advice. And she turned to me and she said, Tabitha, you know what? You've been through things in your life and you've seen these things, but you know why you're having difficulties now? It's because you are a pioneer. You've not, you haven't seen what it's like to be a mother. You haven't seen what it's like to be a wife. You haven't seen certain things in your life and you have to pioneer your way. And I was just like, and she just began to spoke, speak to me and pour into my life and build me up. Yeah. And that was, you know, just the beginning of Pio Woman, mm -hmm. the Pioneer Woman Ministry. Um, um, and so Pio Woman is about um, me just believing that there's a pioneer on the inside of every woman, yeah. that a pioneer is a leader. Mm -hmm. It's someone who leads the way. Mm -hmm. It's someone who is maybe the first, you know. So for me, I was the first in my family to go to college. I was the first in my family to, I don't know, get married, get married and, and have a godly marriage. Mm -hmm. My The first to be in ministry mm -hmm. and the first to do so many things, maybe own a home mm -hmm. and, you know, um, just all of that kind of thing, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can feel hopeless in being the in the first, like, man, how am I going to do this? But you don't know me. You don't know where I come from. You don't know, you know, the things that I've done. No, you can pioneer your way to where God says that you're supposed to be. And so I just believe that, um, you know, as a Pio woman, mm -hmm. uh, we have the ability, we have the strength, we have the power yeah. from God yeah. to be what he's called us to be. Amen. So here at um, a live church mm -hmm. um, in Orlando, Florida, um, in different parts of Florida, we have um, a Pio woman event twice mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. And if you are a woman and that just bears witness with you, you want to be around other strong women, other virtuous women, other pioneering women, I would encourage you to come in, hang out in Orlando, man. And uh, we do these every August mm -hmm. and also every February yep. of every year. It's just a one night event where hundreds of women come from all around just to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. All right. Hey, well, we're out of time for today, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. I pray that today um, episode was a blessing for you, that it added value to you, that you can see yourself a pioneer woman and being who God's called you to be. Um, if you're newer to our show and you want to be the first to get the content, it's released every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in America. All right. And you can hit the subscribe button if you're on YouTube or hit the download button to get our podcast. Um, if this was a blessing to you, share your testimony with us by writing a review. If you want to share it privately for some reason, you can also email us. I believe there's an email address in the show notes. Just know that you are not alone. We are praying with you. Amen. We are standing with you and we we believe the best is yet to come. Okay. And so until next time, thank you for joining doing life with Ken and Tabitha. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.